Hi, and thank you for joining us here at Tax Talk UK, where we talk about all things tax. Um, so as part of our um, QuickBooks um, demo bite size guides, um, today we're going to look at how to submit your VAT return from your QuickBooks software. So the first thing um, to say is, of course, the, um, the whole purpose of using um, software for MTD, Making Tax Digital, is to be able to submit your, um, your VAT return directly from the software. But it's important to remember that the submission um, must be accurate, and it only can be accurate if the information has all been entered and has been entered um, correctly. So, um, so before you um, come to submit your VAT return, do make sure that you have all your sales and purchase invoices, all of your expenses, all of your bank um, feeds um, processed, um, allocated or um, reconciled if you don't have a bank feed before you come to do um, the VAT return. So you get to the point where you're confident that you have all of the transactions accounted for um, for the period um, of the VAT return. And um, now I'm going to show you how to um, submit the return from the software. But firstly, what I'm going to do is to show you how to check the reports, um, which will, um, will actually give you the information um, of how the figures that are going to be submitted on your VAT return have arrived. So into the demo um, company then. So um, as I mentioned, we're going to um, look at the report. So we should um, be checking the reports um, would be the first thing that we do before we actually come to submit the VAT return. So if we um, click into reports on the left-hand panel, and we're just going to um, scroll down to the VAT reports. Now, one thing that you will remember is if you actually click the star, next to each of the reports that you're um, looking at on a reg regular basis, what you will find is if you, next time you go into your reports, they will actually be saved in your favorites and you won't have to keep scrolling down. So um, just a little tip um, for the reports that you're reviewing regularly to favorite them and then you won't have to keep um, remembering where they are. So the, there's three reports that I'm going to look at before we um, look at how to submit the return. So the first one I'm going to look at is the VAT exception report. So one thing that you should be aware of is that once your return is submitted um, either through the software, which um, these days most people will be um, required to, um, to comply with um, MTD, so um, you will be. But either way, once um, QuickBooks is aware that you have submitted your um, VAT return, it will flag all of the transactions up to that point to know which transactions have been reported to HMRC on your VAT return. Now, sometimes there may be scenarios where once the VAT um, period has ended and you submitted your return for that period, you may find that you've inadvertently omitted um, something um, from that. And um, as you may be aware, that as long as your error or your omission is less than £10,000, then you can just include that in the next um, VAT return. So, um, to, so to um, accomplish this within QuickBooks, you would simply enter the transaction that you admitted. And when you come to do the next VAT return, QuickBooks will know um, that this transaction was entered after you submitted the VAT return, and therefore it will know that um, it still needs to be reported to HMRC. So this is what the VAT exception report is um, all about. So if we load that report, this is telling us the transaction, in this scenario, um, just one transaction, this transaction related to a previously submitted VAT um, return period, but it was entered after that submission was made. So it's just alerting us 
that this is what is going to be included. So we would want to obviously either save or print um, our reports um, because in any um, in any instance that we um, have a VAT inspection, we will need to be able to show the HMRC officer how we have come to the figures um, that were submitted on the return. So these are the reports that will um, be able to show you that information. So let's go back to the report list. So let's look now at the um, detail report. So it's important that we're going to look at um, the quarter that we're actually submitting um, the return for. So um, invariably, we will be into the next quarter by the time that we're actually submitting. So um, we would normally at least want to go back to um, last quarter. And so then we would change the dates. And of course, we can do custom if it's not if it's not the uh, exact one. And then we would run the report. So this report here is the transactions for the VAT um, quarter that, um, that we are going to submit for. And we can click this button here to include the exceptions. And if we run rerun that report, that will include the um, exceptions from the um, from that haven't been submitted from um, previous previous um, returns. Um, so if we go back to the report list, then we then look at the um, VAT um, 100 report, and this is the actual um, return that is going to be um, submitted. And um, so if we run run the report, that shows us the information now. This is not included the exception. So we, um, if we want to see what's actually going to be submitted and we would need to, um, to include those exceptions. Now it doesn't matter which way you do it, whether you run all of the reports without the exceptions and the exception report or include them um, within the report. I personally like to um, run the exception report separately so that I can just have the opportunity to review what's what's um, actually being flagged up from previous quarters, um, just as a as a, a, I guess a sanity check to make sure that all is okay. So if we go back to our dashboard, then um, if we um, we've so we've looked at our reports, we're happy with the information that's um, presented on there. So if we look in the taxes um, um, section and um, go to VAT, that will then enable us to submit our um, VAT um, return. So we would, um, again, we would have um, selected the reports for the period um, of the actual re return. This is um, demo software, so the, um, the, the returns are a little bit out of, out of sequence. Um, but so the, the next return that is due and um, per this software is to the 31st of March 22. So if we just simply click prepare return, um, that will show us the return. Now we've already checked our report. So we're happy that the um, figures, we've looked at the breakdown of how those figures have, um, ha have arisen. And so we're happy because obviously if we weren't happy when we ran the reports, we would have corrected before we got to, um, to this point. Um, and um, and then in again, this is demo software, so we can't actually submit directly to um, HMRC, but the, the green button here would have the drop down option that says submit to HMRC. We would click that button, we would enter our username and our password. And as long as we have already um, registered um, our HMRC gateway account for MTD, along the VAT return would go via MTD um, guidelines and it would be submitted directly from your software to HMRC. And then once it's submitted, you will um, receive an email from QuickBooks. But you could also, if you want to, uh, log into your gateway account to just to be able to see that um, that, that is um, submitted. And then um, you would just simply need to make the payment, um, assuming that there's a payment to make, unless you're set up for direct um, debit when that will be um, collected. Um, automatically by direct debit. So hopefully this um, helps you to understand how to submit your VAT return 
um, using, um, uh, by making tax digital guidelines using your QuickBooks software. So thank you very much for watching. And if you have found this useful, please do um, like the video so that helps us to understand what content people are finding the most helpful. And please do subscribe to our channel for um, more support in um, your um, self-employment. Thank you. Goodbye.